Hey hey, Marcus House with you here and what an exciting day it has been. This afternoon and after a bunch of delays and a failed attempt at the launch yesterday due to an issue with the igniters, Starhopper took to the skies with its second and final untethered flight for this test vessel. The target flight for this was 150 meters in altitude, which was revised down from 200 meters before today's flight. The reason for this seems to be due to regulatory approvals being more difficult above the 150 meter mark, but that's possibly a little bit of speculation at this point. The Starhopper itself is roughly 20 meters in height, so we were expecting the view of the Starhopper hovering up to around seven to eight times its own height before slowly coming back to gently touch down. From these shots, it certainly does look like the target altitude there was reached successfully. And just for the moment, I will be quiet while we watch the rest of this replay. So there we go, so exciting to see this thing fly. It was really amazing. Um, I don't know if I saw something fly off there right at the end. Um, anyway, it touches down, everything looks beautiful. Just incredible flight. So there we go, a successful flight and the final flight for the Starhopper. Uh, and the Starhopper itself will now be converted to a Raptor engine test stand as outlined here by Elon Musk. Now, over the past week or two, we've seen Starhopper get delayed several times due to regulations and approvals from the Federal Aviation Administration. That's not to say that the delays were unjustified in any way, but it did take longer than expected for the flights to be approved. Now, over the weekend, we did see a lot of positive information indicating that the flight was going to be scheduled in early this week. We started to see tweets from people on site, such as Boca Chica Gal here, with a potential risk to health and safety notice to temporarily vacate during the flight. Now, this just goes to show that they're certainly not taking these test flights lightly. Um, and they're essentially here saying that there is a risk that a malfunction of the SpaceX vehicle during the flight will create an overpressure event that can break windows. Therefore, in order to protect public health and safety, it is recommended that you consider temporarily vacating yourself, other occupants and pets from the area during the space flight activities. At a minimum, you must exit your home or structure and be outside of any building on your property when you hear the police sirens, which will be activated at the time of the space flight activity to avoid or minimize the risk of injury. Now, this was a pretty awesome notice in that it did give us a little hint of what could be possible if Starhopper had exploded. Uh, the vessel, although it looks short and stumpy, is actually quite large. Uh, an explosion here has the potential to blast out windows in nearby homes. Pretty crazy stuff. Uh, in this case, it seems that it's probably safer to be outside watching rather than inside with a potential torrent of broken glass flying all over the place. Now, after all the news around Starhopper and Starship over the last few months, it's easy to read a lot of negativity around these vessels. Now, because they look so steampunk in their appearance, there's a huge number of comments about the test vessels having zero chance of achieving anything useful. But what people are not understanding is that the appearance of the actual body is by far the least important aspect of these vessels. The entire purpose here is testing out the new Raptor engine technology and the inner workings of the vessels themselves. I mean, look how far SpaceX have come with this just over the last eight months or so. We've gone from having you know a basic mock design to having a few real successful flights with Starhopper. And with any luck, we're going to see Starship ready for test flights very soon as well. 
This is all a huge technical challenge given that the Raptor is a full flow stage combustion cycle engine fueled with liquid methane and liquid oxygen. This engine was not only incredibly complex to design, but it's also an engine type that has never actually flown before Starhopper's first 20 meter flight. The Russian RD-270 was an engine of this type way back in 1962, but that was cancelled during testing and never actually left the ground. To have created such an engine is a colossal achievement, a worldwide first. So it's sure going to be interesting to see what is next for SpaceX after this achievement. So we're now all saying goodbye to Starhopper. We all hope to see you soon on the test stand helping to evaluate the next versions of the incredible Raptor engine before they take flight on the next much larger Starship prototypes being constructed both in Texas as well as Florida. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Please do take a second to like and subscribe. It really does help me to keep creating this content for you to enjoy. If you have any comments or questions, please drop them down below. Today in the tile in the bottom left, we have the video from the other week where we talk about SpaceX's crazy plan to land on the moon within two years. There's a lot of skeptics and perhaps this is justified. I wouldn't bet against SpaceX after all they've achieved over the last decade. In the top right is my latest video, and in the bottom right, a video that YouTube has selected from my channel just for you. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you all in the next video.